speaker, the last speaker of the session. Graham Bhatt was appointed Chief Operating Officer in July 2008 of ARM. Prior to this, he was EVP and the General Manager of the Processor Division from July of the, the, uh, 2005. And he joined the company in 92 as a VLSI design engineer and led the development of several of the company's early system on chip designs. Since then, Graham has held a number of engineering, marketing, and operations leadership roles. He happens to be a chartered engineer. Please, let's hear it for Graham. Everybody, uh, thank you very much for inviting me here to speak uh, this, this, this evening. Uh, actually, I was uh, last at the, uh, the, this event three years ago, and you know I must say today, listening to all the speakers and the panel sessions that we've had, it's great to hear some of the progress that has been made in India and addressing some of the opportunities, some of the challenges um, that we all face in, in trying to address the opportunity for India here. Now, I'm going to talk today about innovation. I want to talk a bit more about the opportunity. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the semiconductor industry more broadly as well. So, yeah, to, to kick off then, a little bit of recent history. So, ARM recently celebrated our 25th anniversary of the founding of the company. And uh, since that, uh, since that, in, the, in that time, our partners worldwide have shipped more than 75 billion ARM-based devices. And um, so, you know, you can look at that as being 10, uh, 10 ARM processor-based chips for every person on the planet. Of course, the ramp-up rate of that has been uh, increasing dramatically over the past few years. So by the time you get to 2015, then uh, it's, you know, order of two ARM-based chips shipped for every person on the planet in 2015. And really this is a sign of the success of the entire ARM partnership and ecosystem. I know many of our partners are represented here, so thank you very much for your uh, support working with us over those 25 years, which have been uh, an amazing journey. ARM is about enabling innovation. I'm sure you know we don't manufacture anything, we're, a, we're an IP company, we're a technology company, we provide the designs that our partners lay a value on top of. And that can be anything from a Cortex M0, tiny power sipping Cortex M0 IoT platform design to a large, complex, 64-bit, multi-core SOC targeting uh, server or HPC application. And, you know, this uh, IP business model that we pioneered back then in the early 1990s has proved highly successful and highly scalable as well. So, um, now the 75 billion uh, number. I am reliably informed, and I admit I haven't done the maths myself, that if you were to lay all of those chips end to end, they would stretch from the, from the Earth to the Moon. So, staying on this uh, space theme for a minute, earlier this year, a uh, British astronaut, a uh, guy named uh, Tim Peake, took an arm-based Raspberry Pi up to the International Space Station. And he's going to be running some experiments on that board that have been submitted by UK school children, collecting the results and downloading them back to Earth. That's a pretty exciting thing to be doing. Now, India, of course, is also doing very well uh, with its space program and another great example of how some really exciting innovation uh, can be done at a relatively low cost. So, it's, um, you know, it's great to see these kind of examples the future, the next 25 years, as I look at the next 25 years for ARM, and also the opportunity for India, a very exciting future. The kind of global innovation we talked about here enables us to do these kind of things. Uh, you know, sending sending uh, satellites in space, all of this kind of thing. So, 
Um, the, the, the future is, uh, is, is certainly really exciting. And um, you know, talking of innovation, innovation is about making people's lives better as well. And we recently, in, in partnership with UNICEF, we ran a global competition called Wearables for Good. And the, this competition uh, was to uh, try and stimulate innovation, to um, design uh, products that, that, that would solve real, real challenges out there in, in the world. And it's kind of interesting that of the uh, three of the finalists had Indian engineers involved. And in fact, the two winning entries for all that competition um, were uh, both heavily involved Indian engineers, uh, and the first of which was this um, uh, uh, organization called Cushy Baby. And this product uh, enables healthcare workers to track immunization of children over a two year period. So it's an example of, it's, it's quite simple, but it's a really clever idea of addressing a real problem, particularly in rural areas. And then the second winner, this one's really interesting because actually there's no, there's no real technology, there's no IoT or processes in this, uh, in this solution. It's just a clever idea, the so pen. And the idea here is just encouraging small children to wash their hands uh, after they've been doing uh, an activity, helping with sort of hygiene and all of that. So, and, and the great thing about this is it's just encouraging people to think differently about a problem. So let's um, move on now to take a look at what's happening in the semiconductor industry. And so I guess the first thing to observe is that the growth that we've seen in the semiconductor industry over the last five years or so has almost entirely been driven by mobile. Uh, you can see the statistics here. Uh, Everything else beyond mobile, mobile handsets and memory, and of course a lot of the memory is driven by mobile as well, uh, was pretty much flat over, over that period. So mobile has been very important and is going to be very important going, going forward. And you know, I think one of the things that's interesting about mobile, so uh, Samir was talking earlier on this afternoon in the track about the democratization of innovation and I think you know that uh, that's a really important theme which resonates for me I, I, I definitely say and um, the mobile the smartphone revolution you know really for me drove the first wave of that democratization of innovation in the software space in the app space enabling entrepreneurs enabling you know young people in their bedrooms to be able to innovate and produce um, uh, applications that could get a global audience uh, solving, solving real problems uh, for virtually no upfront investment. So now I'll come back to this, this theme of how barriers to entry for innovation and democratization of innovation uh, has, uh, has changed and, and gives a real opportunity, particularly in India, I think. So in mobile, sticking with mobile for a minute, Again, over, over the last five years or so, we've seen this relentless progress in mobile. Now, of course, ARM technology is at the heart of almost all of these mobile devices, um, especially the smartphones. And you can see the relentless drive there with new applications, um, uh, <coughs> higher resolution displays, and um, the massive increase in compute performance and graphics performance from our Mali graphics technology that's happened uh, over, over that period. An amazing amount of innovation that has occurred just in those uh, five years or so. And again, you know, this is thanks to the work that the entire uh, semiconductor industry has, um, has put in and, and all of our partners in the broader ecosystem. But um, I want to talk a little bit about where's the next opportunity in mobile, what I think it's going to look like over the next couple of years. Um, I think the best way to summarise it is it's going to be all about making your mobile, mobile device a more natural uh, experience, becoming a more seamless part 
of all of our everyday lives. So, uh, for example, we all know that uh, there are more and more wearable uh, products and technologies emerging, and the way that those devices interact with a smartphone, the way that they communicate, um, the way that individual applications and services information is distributed across some of these different devices to give an optimal and seamless experience for the user, we're going to see a lot more of that. We're going to see a lot more con context awareness in our smart mobile devices. So awareness of physical surroundings, and of course this is where it links into the IoT that I'm coming on to in a moment. Um, awareness of, of, of physical surroundings, awareness of the context of what you're doing, linkage between different applications, uh, just to make life easier and, and more effective. And then I think the other trend is going to be around different input methods. So speech recognition, of course, and improvements in you know, machine learning for improved speech recognition, but also in uh, gesture control for mobile devices. So it's all about those devices becoming a more and more seamless part of our everyday, everyday lives. And, you know, really, um, one of the things that means for ARM is continuing to provide what we call the, the right size computing. So the levels of performance, which of course are always increasing to deliver uh, the requirements of all these applications at the lowest possible power point, which of course has been at the heart of ARM's DNA since the company was, was started. So mobile as we all know, the, the smartphone market, we've seen this incredible growth over the last five years. The pace of that growth inevitably is slowing down at the moment. So you know, where are the next waves of growth going to come from for the semiconductor industry? And I think we, we, had a, we had a good panel session earlier on today on automotive, and that is one key sector uh, where we're starting to see glimpses of where the future is going already. So at CES uh, this year, at CES in Las Vegas in January, we saw uh, NVIDIA release their new um, Drive PX2 chip, which uh, gives you 360 degree uh, situational contextual sensing around the vehicle. You know, notice the link back there to what I was talking about in mobile, the contextual awareness that is going to be a key part of enabling um, a lot of the advanced ADAS systems that we're going to see in automotive. So there's a huge amount of innovation going into the car, and that is going to cause an explosion in the demand for, uh, for semiconductors and, uh, and complex systems in the vehicle. The car industry is being disrupted, right? We see this with what a company like Tesla is doing, for example, the recent summon update that they added to their, uh, their software so you can summon your vehicle um, to come to you and park itself. These kind of things are first steps, right, towards the autonomous vehicle. We know Google, of course, has their uh, self-driving cars that have been being tested for quite a while now. There are challenges, though. You know, we, we, we're, we're still at the first step stage on this. Rain is a one. So the, uh, the Google cars will slow down or pull over if it's raining, right? At that point, a human has to step in and decide, well, you know, what... Uh, what, what, uh, what do we do here? So there are still challenges to solve. But I think automotive is a great example of where there are multiple smart connected technologies coming together to enable the revolutionization of an industry. And you know this is where the boundaries of IoT start getting blurred because a lot of um, automotive, so, so a, a lot of the innovation in automotive is also going to be dependent on IoT in the sense of connectivity to uh, sensing other vehicles, sensing um, uh, road, uh, roadside, roadside sensors to enable the car to make decisions about what it is uh, what it's going to do next. So going on to the IoT, well, we've talked a lot about the IoT today in many of the presentations, and I think we'd all agree that you know, in reality the Internet of Things is already here. And for us, this is borne out by the, the numbers that we see in terms of you know, how it's affected our market share. Now, remember I was talking a little earlier about the, uh, the number of ARM chips shipped in 2015, about two for every person uh, on, the, on the planet. And, um, but if you look what's happened over the last 10 years uh, to our market share in embedded 
So applications with embedded intelligence, many of which have connectivity, of course, 34% of those shipments uh, now coming from those embedded applications. So you can kind of do the approximate maths on that. The IoT is, uh, is, is already here. As an example, you're looking here at the Cortex M0. This is our smallest and lowest power processor. And uh, this example is showing it implemented in a beacon together with our Cordio radio uh, technology. <coughs> this will operate for 10 years on a coin cell battery. And the IoT technologies and the, the platforms that we have available mean you can connect almost anything uh, now. And I think, I mentioned earlier, I think this is going to be particularly important for India. Right, here are some examples of uh, products, ideas, concepts that have been created by entrepreneurs in, in India, the, in the IoT space somewhere. There's a huge amount of activity um, going, on, going on here. And, you know, I, I, I talked earlier about the uh, democratization of innovation. And I think the IoT is driving the second wave of that. And it is really becoming, uh, is becoming very easy with the technologies that companies like Arm put in, put in, put in place, platforms that we put in place for developers or entrepreneurs to create new hardware and software systems to address specific challenges that are unique to a particular vertical market, to a particular region of the world. India, I think, of course, because of the size of the population, the size of the market, is, has a unique opportunity here. The combination of the size of the market and the IoT technologies that are available uh, for some really exciting innovations and the capability to build businesses that can scale out very quickly because of the size of the market. So, you know, looking to the future of IoT, we said IoT is already here. Well, the opportunity for IoT is huge as well. These are some numbers from Gartner that uh, look at the future size of some different uh, aspects of the Internet of Things market. You can see the kind of you know, compound annual growth rates that are being forecast there. It's a great opportunity for, uh, for all of us. And India is very well positioned to capitalize on this opportunity. As I mentioned a minute ago, I mean, I think if we look at the macro economy, inflation being down, the fiscal deficit being on target, and what the government is doing and encouraging foreign direct investment as well, seem to be doing the right things to stimulate growth. Um, let's not forget that you know, over 2,000 chips a year are already designed in India by over 20,000 engineers. So a lot of the expertise is, is here. Now we, as ARM, absolutely we want to support that growth, encourage that growth and the growth of the ecosystem around it. We regard ourselves, you know, we are HQ'd in the UK, but we think of ourselves as an Indian company as well. We have more than 500 people working in India. And we're investing in those people, both the people we employ today, but also the people that we are going to employ in future, the graduates from Indian universities that we're going to employ in the future. Um, <coughs> And I'm very pleased today to be able to make an announcement about a partnership. We are working with the IEEE to support a new efficient embedded design course that they have designed. Uh, this course is going to be launched first in Indian universities because of the strength of the courses in India and of course the number of students who are coming out of uh, these, these, these high quality universities in India. So, you know, these students are the people who are going to be designing the products of tomorrow to address some of the opportunities that we see here um, in, in, uh, in, in India. Food to factories, connected cars to people, smart cars to smart watches. Some advances are consumer driven. Um, but a lot of the opportunity is driven by the need for efficient use of resources, uh, cutting energy use. And again, of course, we think that ARM's focus on low power systems is going to be very, very important here. It, so industrial 
devices. So looking uh, for a moment at two contrasting extremes of the Internet of Things. Industrial devices, construction, these kind of applications. Uh, actually, the, these IoT devices used in this class of application can often have a great business case for them um, in terms of improving the efficiency of uh, the, the, the process uh, of, of building, for example, um, and in terms of sensors being embedded into buildings and making it much, much easier to manage those buildings subsequently. Um, so again, in a country as big as India and with the huge uh, uh, range of infrastructure investment uh, projects going on, a lot of opportunity there. But then let's go to the other extreme, if you like, of IoT around medical. Again, it's a topic that's been mentioned several times today, but I think here the opportunity globally, the opportunity specifically in India is huge for medical devices. Here's an example of um, a uh, medical, uh, medical device. This particular one is um, a device to help people with diabetes, measuring insulin, and being able to try to communicate those readings back uh, to to, uh, to to a doctor, and um, so that's a great example of something that uh, that exists today. Here's another one. Okay, this one's a little bit more interesting. Uh, this is a partner we work with, company Proteus. So uh, these guys have created this system that <coughs> includes a wearable patch that again can send information back to a healthcare provider or maybe to a relative whoever needs to see the data. But they've also created an ingestible uh, connected pill, right? And I believe this has recently got uh, FDA approval in the, in the US. And, you know, the idea is you swallow the pill and the patch will, uh, will tell the doctor or your, your carer, uh, or you maybe if you're caring for an elderly relative, that the pill has been taken. So you're able to remotely monitor Maybe an elderly relative is looking after themselves properly. So, you know, these, these are great examples of the kind of things that you can do with this technology. But, of course, with all big opportunities, there is a challenge. And again, um, this is something that has been mentioned several times today, and I'm not surprised. But the challenge of security for IoT, this is one of the big challenges that we as an industry have to solve if the IoT is really going to be able to realize its full potential. This for me is the number one challenge of the Internet of Things. And that's especially true when we are talking about applications which are using very sensitive data like medical applications or safety critical applications, you know, as soon as you start interacting with the car or robotics in an industrial environment, for example, safety suddenly becomes a key concern and really what we need to do in order to solve these problems. Um, it is all about um, a holistic solution for security and you know it's no good for us in the industry to expect a you know a small startup company to be able to have the who's got an innovative idea for an IoT application to also have the expertise to be able to make that um, system secure is a very very specialist and complex area so this is an area that we have been uh, investing in to uh, make it easy for companies to put together IOT subsystems um, that are secure both at the hardware root of trust level and then in terms of the software layers on top of that right through to the cloud and the services and applications that can that are going to run on the IoT endpoint, whatever the device is. And it's all about making that easy and making it quick for developers, for entrepreneurs to be able to create um, a new design. So we have, a, we have a platform which is called Embed. We are an Embed platform. Um, there's an Embed operating system that's used on the client device, an Embed server that manages the device uh, in embed server software that manages the device in the cloud. So we, we have found that uh, you can create an IoT endpoint 
point in about three months with three engineers using this technology. So coming back to the point earlier about democratization of innovation, and given the enormous range of applications that are possible for the IoT, once you start getting down to uh, that kind of uh, short level of time and small amount of effort to uh, <coughs> create a product that is, that is going to be really differentiating and adding value to a particular, solving a real problem, maybe something that's unique to the India market. That's really exciting. And this is why I think that the IoT has the potential to be a vehicle to drive really explosive growth of, uh, of entrepreneurship, startups um, in the India market. And, uh, and of course, being able to do that, as I said earlier, in a secure <coughs> way and have confidence in the security uh, system that's been put in place is absolutely key. Now, when we were talking about security earlier, uh, one of the things that came up is regulation, government regulation. Well, yes, you know, that is important, but what is most important is the relationship of trust that needs to exist between the consumer or the user of the end device who owns the data or from whom the data is, is coming and the provider of the service that is using that data. That relationship of trust has to be built and it has to be maintained in order for the true benefits of the IoT in terms of data sharing and broader data use of applications to be fully, across different applications, to be fully realized. So, to summarize then, I think the IoT represents uh, an amazing opportunity for particularly in India to capitalize on with the massive market that exists uh, in India with a million graduate engineers leaving university every year. All of the key ingredients in place for the semiconductor industry and of course that $150 billion services industry that exists. And you know, I think a lot of the skills that have been built up in uh, systems, uh, in integrating complex systems over the last 20 years or so in India are very relevant to be applied in this IoT market as well. So really there's an opportunity to jump ahead in these smart city applications, healthcare and transportation kind of applications, all of these IoT applications. Um, of course we are very ready to partner with you. Uh, we want to help enable the kind of creativity and technical expertise that is going to create success for the Make in India campaign. So I want to finish just by uh, reflecting back on a prediction that was made uh, back in, in 1950 in a magazine called Popular Mechanics. And um, that prediction said, in the future, computers will weigh no more than 1.5 tons. Now, fortunately, that prediction hasn't come to pass, otherwise my smartphone in my pocket might be uh, causing me a little bit of a problem at the moment. But the lesson here is that the future is very hard to predict. And, you know, half of the most globally successful IoT companies probably don't exist yet. So this is all about enabling what is to come and what can happen in, here in India to enable that. And together, we can do that. Thank you very much. Scope of innovations and the opportunities for India that you spelled out. I would request Guru Ganeshan to kindly step up on stage and hand over a token of gratitude to his boss.